Hello again, brothers and sisters. Um, this is the other video I told you I was going to make. It's still Saturday, May 16th, and it's 9.49 a.m. All right, this one comes to us from the U.K., but I'm going to keep the person anonymous for obvious reasons. Um, this person has been very sick with something in his chest. And uh, been, I've been praying that it's not, was not, you know, the thing they say is going around so much. Okay. Um, now I have to separate these emails. Okay. He came, he wanted me to know that he got his tests back. Now, he's been sick for, I want to say a month. It seems like it's been a month, maybe three weeks. And he's just now getting his tests back. And he said they that it is negative for COVID. Whoops, I said it. Well, anyway, we can talk about it. They want us to know all about it, right? Okay, but he said, uh, he's showing me a picture of the antibiotics that he has taken, and it's working so much better than amoxicillin. Okay, so they have not been treating him as if he had the other thing. And now he shows me a Okay, forgive me, I have to, you know how if you have Gmail, when you write somebody and then they write you back and then you write them back and then you write, they write you back, you end up with a series of emails because you've deleted, you typed back and you deleted it, right? So I got to go by this one list. All right, this is a comment. Not his. I cannot tell who it is. There's a, you know how we all have a circle next to our channel name that shows up identifying us. And if you see my channel name with a different picture than what I use, then you know it's not really me. You see? Okay. This person had put under a video this comment. My friend's mother-in-law died of a heart attack. So we don't know what country this is. She died of a heart attack last week. The death certificate came back. She died of COVID-19. He phoned up and said he wanted it changed to heart attack. He was told... I know it's wrong, but we have been told to do this. And there's nothing I can do about it. I wonder who he was talking to. If the virus is what they say it is, you wouldn't need to falsify any documents. I wonder if that person said that. Because there's no quotation marks. Does anyone reading this think this is what the NHS should do? Okay, that would be National Health Services. So that might tell what country. Or is that a European? Is that American? I don't think it's American. Ours is NIH. And we've got the CDC. And then you've got the WHO. So I'm not sure NHS, I know it's in the UK, but I don't know if it's in all of Europe. I'm not sure. Okay. Okay, then, okay, this person that I'm keeping anonymous says below it, uh, does not sound good to me. Oh, and on 
the Tuesday at work, he finally got to go back to work. I had to work in a, I had work to do in a ward where there was suspected COVID-19 patients, okay? The whole ward was empty. So I don't know what to think. But the Lord did say it's an evil virus and we are to plead the blood of Jesus when we go out. His blood is powerful. Amen. Or he put amen. Exclamation. Exclamation. Yes, this is true. But I also, um, what I said, um, Okay, I'll tell you what I told him. That sounds really suspicious to me. In the beginning, when a couple of people got messages like that to plead the blood or claim Psalm 91, it could have been the Lord get, getting us used to doing that for anything. But I suspect the Lord wouldn't make it out to be more than what it is. You see how it's what it's turned out to be? And yet there were a few people that got messages saying your only prevention is to claim Psalm 91 or uh, something of that effect. And someone else apparently was told to plead the blood before you go out. Okay, these are things that we should do anyway, just in case. Because you don't know if you could get in a car wreck or uh, someone throws a brick off of an overpass and it comes through your windshield and it's happened. You, you never know. And that was a Christian couple. And they all died. Because the brick came right at the driver's head. That's really sad, you know. They were Christians of some kind. I hope they went to heaven. Anyway, that's it's not about that. Um, I said, but I would suspect the Lord wouldn't make it out to be more than what it is. You saw an empty ward. Here in the USA, many hospitals remain empty. Nurses are getting laid off because people have not been sick enough to keep if they do come to the ER. You have to have certain... You have to meet criteria to be admitted or your insurance won't pay. You see, they can't just say, oh, they've got COVID-19, let's admit them. It took weeks for him to get his test results back. And now, I just saw a video title a little bit ago. Uh, In-home testing, like they're going to get a prick of blood. And put it in a solution. And if it turns a color, you have it. Is that Satan has his plans, but God has his. We have nothing to fear or worry about if you're living right. All right. I said nurses were getting laid off because people weren't sick enough to keep. If they do come to the ER, too many reports of people dying from heart attacks and even falling and bleeding out in their head called COVID-19. So what does that tell you of people getting those messages from the Lord? I put in quotes. We take all things to him and observe the outcomes. This is how you determine a message is truly from the Lord. And when it isn't. And when it isn't. The devil and his minions are so deceitful they can lie to even God's own servants if we are not careful. Why do you think that the whole ward was empty? Why do you think that whole ward was empty? 
if this was such a horrible illness, there would have been some, although it is late in the flu season, so maybe there were a lot in there, and only the nurses of that ward could tell you. And then I went on about being glad that he's well enough to be back to work and that his tests were negative. I mean, think about it. Why would Jesus tell us your only hope is to plead Psalm 91 every night or read it however he said it, however it was worded. Your preventative was is Psalm 91. Or plead the blood of Jesus over yourself before you leave the house. Okay, what, what would that tell you if you got that message? If, if you got a message at all telling you something to do, that sounds right. That sounds right. Plead the blood of Jesus over yourself before you leave the house. Wow, I got a message from the Lord about it. It must be really bad. Wouldn't you think that? I would. I don't think I'm much different than the rest of you. If the Lord gives you a message on what to do, you must do this to be protected. Well... Put your comments below. Tell me what you think. I'll end this here and say I will talk to you later. And um, there is no fear at all in anything. Okay? Right now everything's being manipulated by Satan and the powers that be. And they have their plans for this to be worse and the vaccine to come and the digital ID to come. Don't worry about it. If you're ready to go, you're out of here. I'm convinced we will be spared that hour of temptation that shall come upon the whole earth. It's in Revelation chapter 3, verses 10 and 11. Jesus is talking to the church of Philadelphia. And don't forget, Luke 21, 36. Let us all pray that we may be counted worthy to escape all these things that are to come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. See, what that was was not a pandemic as tr in the true sense. They made it to look like one. They, there was a lot, it seemed to be a lot of people dying in China. The hospital got thrown up in 10 days, thrown up, whatever, built in 10 days. And then we got reports of, oh, the people are just crazy, they go psychotic, and then they die. And they get thrown into a, bur a burner, a furnace, a cremation, you know, furnace. And it sounded horrible. And then we hear about it. Them dying so bad in Italy and Iran. But then we find out that it's mostly elderly people in Italy anyway. The ones who were dying were getting one of the four things that were in their vaccinations that year. And coronavirus was one of them. So if you got tested for it, positive. It could have been a regular coronavirus. But if you get a bad enough cold and you're old and you're not, your lungs are starting to, everything starts breaking down. And that is why the elderly take a greater hit, even with a cold. If they don't treat it, then it can run, run drainage into their lungs, set up pneumonia. The usual happened to my uncle. Right after he got a flu shot and a pneumonia shot. Now, what is that all about? 69? No, 79. 79. But he was crippled and all bent over from, believe it or not, an explosion in World War II. 
not on the battlefield. He was a cook, a chef. He was a cook in the back of a truck. And somebody lost a lot of money in poker to him and handed him a pail of gasoline instead of a pail of water to put the fire out on his cook stove. It blew up. Blew him out the back of the truck and broke his back. Such rampant evil over greed, jealousy, and greed. Anyway, that's a whole nother video or story, whatever. So, uh, he got saved on his deathbed. Yeah, that's the uncle that didn't believe in Jesus. He believed there was a God. He didn't believe in Jesus. Not until his deathbed. He died five times and they brought him back. So it is a testimony. And then when he they when he came out of it, that fifth time he came out of it. And they pulled the or what is it, the respirator out of your mouth. And he was fully awake. After two months of being on a ventilator. And he said, I got to see that preacher that's been coming over, coming around trying to talk me into believing in Jesus. I need to talk to him right now. And they got a hold of him and they got him up there an hour away. He led him to the Lord. Then he said, I got to be baptized. I have got to be baptized right now. Find somewhere to baptize me. They took him, him the preacher and a nurse, took him to the whirlpool. They got him, he dunked him under, pulled him out, and they had a hallelujah moment. My uncle got saved and baptized and died that night, and they could not revive him. Now that was all totally God. I wonder what he saw when he died those five times. I'll find out. I'll get to talk to him again in heaven. He was my favorite uncle. I couldn't talk him into believing in Jesus. No, I couldn't do it. But that preacher kept coming around and coming around. And finally, God let him die and brought him back. Let him die. And, brought, and I just think he just visited hell a few times, don't you? And then maybe he visited heaven. How sweet, how precious is our Lord. How merciful. I had been praying for him since I tried to talk to him. And he said, you don't want to know what I think about your Jesus. It shut me up and I couldn't say another word. But I prayed. I prayed and I prayed for that man. And I know I'll see him again. Anyway. I will go ahead and plead the blood of Jesus over this video so it will go up. And also, um, myself, my computer, my internet connection, I plead the blood of Jesus over each and every one of you and your devices and all of your internet connections. And with that, I'll say bye for now. I'll talk to you later.